this is the beauty of float flying. You can just find yourself a deserted beach. We happen to be on uh, Hope Island. It's a beautiful island, crystal clear water. And uh, if we were here in July, the uh, bay would be filled with mostly sailboats and uh, people camping on the beach and just a great spot in the summertime. I've done a few videos now on trailer takeoffs and the reverse of a trailer takeoff, which is landing a float plane on the grass. And I've often had some really good questions in the comments. One of the main questions that people ask is, why would you take a float plane off on a trailer? Don't you have wheels on the floats? And uh, the answer is quite simple. There's basically two types of floats that you have on float planes, uh, straight floats, which are the type that I have, that have no wheels or undercarriage attached to the float at all. It's just the floats themselves. And the other type of float is amphibious floats. And these floats have wheels built into the floats that hydraulically lower when you're ready to land and you lift them up again when you're ready to take off. So why don't I have hydraulic floats and not have to worry about a trailer takeoff? An airplane that has uh, amphibious floats uh, has a lot of weight associated with the wheels and the hydraulics to lift the wheels. And on an airplane like mine, uh, that would amount to about an extra 300 pounds. And I have a useful load of about a thousand pounds on this airplane, meaning I can put a thousand pounds of stuff in the airplane, like people, fuel, uh, camping gear, outboard motors, whatever I want. I've, I've got about a capacity of a thousand pounds to add to the airplane. If I had amphibious floats, I would lose about 300 pounds of that. So I'd have about 700 pounds. So in terms of getting in and out of small lakes, the more weight you have in the airplane, the longer it takes to take off and the longer it takes to land. So you can imagine a small lake, you wanna be able to take off in a short distance. So if I had amphibious floats, I wouldn't be able to put as much stuff in the airplane. So I've got straight floats. So when you have straight floats, you have to either take off at an airport uh, that has both water and land. In other words, when you put your floats on, uh, you can use a dolly, launch it in the lake and, and take off. Unfortunately, there isn't an airport uh, close to where I live like that. So the alternative is to put the floats on the airplane, put the airplane on a trailer, and take off. And then of course the opposite to that is the grass landing. So again, because there isn't an airport where I can land on the water, pull the airplane out of the water, take the floats off, put the wheels on, and then have a runway to take off, the alternative is the grass landing, and this is something that's done quite often. And, and one of the, the biggest questions that people ask me is, well, doesn't it damage the floats? And that's a great question. And the answer is, it can, uh, but if you're careful, it doesn't. So let me just explain that. So typically floats have a, a, a good solid steel keel on the bottom so that when you land on grass, you're actually sliding on that steel keel and not the aluminum of the float itself. So as long as you have a nice smooth landing and you've inspected the landing uh, strip for rocks and, and other hazards that might damage the floats, it's, it's pretty safe. Where it becomes a problem is if you have a hard landing, because obviously there's no suspension, there's no give, and you can bend your floats. So the difference between a normal landing where you would come in and flare and you're basically almost stalling right at, uh, at touchdown or you try to get the speed to that point. Um, with a, a float landing on the grass, we're not actually doing a flare 
uh, because if we do that, we have the tendency of dropping. So what we actually do is, is just uh, put a shallow angle of attack and fly the airplane as slowly as we can onto the ground, onto the grass. And if we do that, and we've checked that there's no hazards on the landing strip, uh, there's no damage to the floats. And I've done this for years and years now, and I've never uh, damaged a float once. So a couple other questions that people have asked about the trailer takeoff. Uh, one is flaps or no flaps? And that's a great question as well. And the answer is, it doesn't matter. You can, you can do a trailer takeoff using flaps. You can do a trailer takeoff without flaps. Imagine an airplane like a J3 that doesn't have flaps. Well, you're, you're gonna do a trailer takeoff without any problem with that. Um, I tend to use flaps when I do a trailer takeoff only because uh, it re slightly reduces my liftoff speed. Um, and, you know, obviously when you're gonna lift off the trailer, you wanna make sure you have a positive rate of climb so that you're not going to come back down and hit the trailer. Uh, there's no there's no risk of hitting the tow vehicle because you can imagine the tow vehicle is going the same speed as the airplane and as the airplane lifts off the tow vehicle tow vehicle is still going very fast um, so typically i use uh about 20 degrees of flaps as i would for a normal takeoff um, but you could do it with no flaps whatsoever it wouldn't wouldn't be a problem one of the other questions that people have asked is doesn't the airplane tend to want to start to float and move on the trailer as you're, as you're building up speed? And that's another great question. And um, it can, but the key is positioning the airplane properly on the trailer. So I've tried to show on the video where the airplane is sitting on the trailer and it's actually in an almost a nose down attitude. So, um, you know, a typical takeoff take attitude when you have a tail dragger, you're, you've, you're at a nose up attitude, you lift your tail and then you rotate and go. On a trailer takeoff, we keep that uh, angle of attack uh, as nose down as we possibly can. So we actually lift up the back of the floats to keep the airplane so it doesn't want to start flying until we're ready to fly. And the other thing we do uh, as we start our takeoff roll, I'm holding full stick forward. So I want to keep that nose down as long as I can. And with the North Star, I can take off at 25 miles an hour. Uh, but when I do a trailer takeoff, I'm actually holding it on the trailer as long as I feel comfortable to do that. And I'm getting up to about 50 miles an hour before I pull the stick back. So I'm actually holding it on the trailer with full stick forward. I've got full power. Uh, and as I'm accelerating, when I see my airspeed get up to 50 miles an hour, I just pull the stick and it just goes woo and, and flies up. So as long as you have the right attitude on the trailer and you're holding your nose down, there's absolutely no tendency for the airplane to start floating and lifting and so on. Um, where people can make a mistake is if they have their airplane sitting too high on the trailer and as you start going it wants to start flying and so it starts to rock and lift a little bit. So long as it's positioned properly on the trailer it's not an issue whatsoever. So if you guys have any other questions about trailer takeoffs or uh, landing a float plane on the grass feel free to put some questions in the uh, in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. All right it's uh Beautiful evening, so I think it's time to uh, get airborne again.